All right. So welcome to this peer review session. Our inter interactivity today is going to be a Padlet. Hello, everybody. So um, we are Mary Rotundo and Judy Summers. Instructional designers at the Center for E-Learning at Florida Atlantic University. And today, uh, it is our pleasure to, to be here and talk to you about and share ideas about peer review. And as we were talking about this, mm -hmm. we realized that um, the things that we've done for the last several weeks all seem to be interrelated. There's sort of a thread running through some of the things that that, that seem to be connected. We did um, syllabus. We did student success. What were some of the others that we well, talked about um, in the last few days? Further back, we did group work, and uh, yeah. we did something called gardening as teaching. Um, and next week. We're going to wrap it up with one of our all-time favorites, metacognition. So definitely there's a um, common thread. Absolutely. Absolutely. And um, to us, it, it is leading towards students becoming self-guided yes. and taking ownership of their own learning process, uh, which is very valuable. As and as so as we talk about peer review today, we're going to look at some of the best practices in peer review and think about the fact that most of us have a pretty limited mm -hmm. viewpoint perspective on it. Uh, we're going to talk about different strategies, different me methodologies to implementing peer review, and then more towards a personal approach, a personal preference towards how you would like to do that. Our ultimate goal today is to come out of this session with a reframed perspective, a new view, a new taste for peer review. And so we're going to take this business look at it. We're going to think about why would we do it? What's the return on the investment when we think about peer review? So uh, this is something that probably our students tend not to like so much. Um, it is actually there with group work. This yeah, right up that, there, top, the, yeah. the, their, their top ten of things <laughs> they really don't want to do in class. I just want to come in and listen to your lecture, Dr. Exactly. So why are you making me do this thing uh -huh. that I probably haven't done before? I'm not comfortable with it. I feel that I have, I don't know how to do it because probably I haven't been trained to do it. So students don't like it and therefore teachers shy away from using this really valuable strategy. So. Today, throughout our presentation, we'll see it as an investment, and we'll talk about some of the reasons why we should invest in coaching and training our students to become really effective peer reviewers. And when you think about it, there are some <clears throat> excellent perspectives on that. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, looking at it from, uh, from a student perspective, this is this is material that's going to transfer all the way through. This is a, these are life skills that they're going to be using wherever they wind up working. It's it's a, it, it transfers within every field. And Absolutely. yeah, so we're going to think about whether or not uh, it's a good idea. Not whether or not we know that it's a good idea for us to start working on those skills right now where we're in a safe environment, there's, it's a low stakes opportunity, and that there's someone to facilitate that learning opportunity. So that's from the point of view of the student. There's also some really tangible benefits 
for you as a teacher? The first one is it saves time. So the first layer of review will not follow, will not fall on your shoulders. Your students will do that from it uh, for you and they will greatly benefit from it. Another um, thing that's going to happen is you're going to be creating a culture that emphasizes growth and takes the emphasis away from, I made a mistake, I failed. And uh, as your students review each other's work and think about what they did that needs um, improvement, this is definitely a framework for higher order thinking skills. Yeah, and I like the, the thought about <clears throat> the idea of making mistakes as being a way of growing rather than a failure. And that's, uh, I, I think that's probably a cultural perspective. It really ties into the um, development of creativity. We've, we've yeah. seen that in um, Dr. Uh, uh, Sir Ken Robinson, is that his name? Yeah. His uh, message about taking away the fear of failure in order yeah. to mm. enhance the ability to be creative. Mm -hmm. mm, definitely, definitely. And so as we thought about in other, other topics that we've looked at, everything that we do as instructors involves a certain amount of investment. And mm -hmm. so when we talked about the return on the investment, is it worth the time it takes to, to get into that? And so it, it definitely is an investment in time, as is almost everything that we do when we're teaching. But um, is it worth it, the investment in the time to try to get our students trained? Mm -hmm. What do you think? <laughs> And also, um, I would absolutely say that it is, and and there's also that that risk involved for on the instructor's part of what if the tool doesn't work properly, or what if the students yeah. get frustrated, which happens every time we try something new. But I would absolutely say it's worth it. Yeah, yeah, um, and that ties back to that idea of mistakes being allowed in the classroom and being uh, an opportunity for growth rather than this ends here. I'm not doing this again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So feedback. Normally we take feedback from our professors and we expect that in our the culture that exists, um, that's what we expect. But in this new perspective, we are going to train our students to trust their peers as the source of feedback. So there's many benefits to it. Um, so the professor definitely steps out of the, um, the um, spotlight and students will take ownership of the process. So become the guide on the side. Exactly, the facilitator rather than the source of knowledge that they will rely on. And so in order to move into that, um, it's time for you to do a little bit of thinking about your own learning. Um, that's, a, that's a precursor for next week. Mm -hmm. uh, do some soul searching on your part. Think about the approach and the strategy that you want to use in order to get your students trained and in order to get them to uh, to develop that trust in the in their peers comments mm -hmm. and Yuri and I today will be your facilitators so we're gonna bring a couple couple ideas on how to do this but we will definitely give you the opportunity to think about a, a, an approach that will work best for you so we're gonna give you we're gonna switch the spotlight and put it on you today mm. and a, a, uh, a some words of wisdom that seem to fit almost <laughs> everything that we do start out small and start early <laughs> yes. so I wanted to say something about that is the start small um, so let's say you don't have to peer review every paper or every project so choose a paper and maybe think about one or two core skills or competencies that you would like to see your students 
try and then let them do and be open to tweaking things as you see what your students are able to do. Start early in the process, which means they have enough trying to work on their projects and come up, come up with a product. So give them time to practice a skill before they actually have to come um, incorporate it to a real assignment. Start, so start small, start early, and uh, allow for plenty of resubmission opportunities throughout the process. So that takes us into <clears throat> what we have considered some of the best practices as far as the peer review process. And um, these are things that you want would be wanting to convey to mm -hmm. students as well as to uh, become intrinsic help within your own perspective. Um, so, so think first about the global aspects of it. Read the whole paper through. Um, how, how does the argument progress? How does it flow? And then tell your students that if they're going to write a comment or record a comment, now they can, that they can do that in Canvas, um, make it on few really targeted issues that are central to the development of that argument and that flow. So that means that the global aspects will require or merit some kind of writing or some kind of more like longer kind of input, um, which will take us then to the next step, the local or surface aid, um, surface level um, edits that needs to be done. So um, tell your students that they don't have to mark extensively every single paragraph. They can do so on one or two. So they can do punctuation, um, spelling mistakes. If there's any grammar or syntax issues, they don't have to actually do that throughout the entire paper. What they need to do throughout the entire paper is concentrate on that general argument and the flow of those ideas. And um, use, give them ideas for the common vocabulary to use all the way across. Give them prompts or a checklist or a rubric for things that are not as, uh, not as involved the less the the basic some of the basic ideas that you want them to look for um, and and working that in then of course to some uh, well let me, let me back up to the to the other one providing your students with examples of comments and papers and uh, how to how to look at it from the perspective of the examples that we've given, ways of looking at it from a various perspective. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and in, in written papers, that would be, um, you had some ideas on, on the types of examples in Mary for, for written papers, right? Yeah, we talked about um, bringing simple paragraphs and uh, letting your students, or if you're gonna give them an entire essay, let them identify any flaws in the argumentation, uh, or give them practice on identifying fact from opinion, for example, or looking for specific evidence that supports an argument. So giving them practice in building up those basic skills. But we also talked about having other kinds of projects, having mm -hmm. your kind of judge the quality of presentations, um, if, if even uh, uh, art pieces. So what is, what makes this art piece a good, uh, a good piece of art? Where is the quality? How do I see that quality transferred to, um, much more than just an essay. 
I really like this because it is so flexible in terms of mm -hmm. the purpose of your course, what your objectives are for your course. You know, that's the thing that you can use to tailor mm -hmm. your direction, your guidance to the students. For example, um, we have we have in the in the academic world we have these high level peer review things that yes. happen, and so it it can be using the stand the those kinds of things as an example for what we're looking for. You know, if you're checking on people's resource uh, research, then that would be one thing to look mm -hmm. for. Yeah, or if it's um, an adult maybe TESOL class, you can bring it to the to the spelling and the grammar. Yes. And you know, that sort of thing. And depending on what if it's if it's uh, science or, or math, you know, checking on each other's formula work and their proofs and things. So I, I just love that. I think it's I love the way you've broken it down into um, different possibilities of things that, that students can look for. Yeah. And it also works uh, when we're when you're doing, say, a smaller group project, they would be able to give each other feedback throughout the whole process as they're developing the final project. And then um, after they do the presentation in the final project, the other the members of the other group would have an opportunity to give them some kind of basic maybe beginning uh, mm -hmm. sorts of feedback one of the the tools that i like to use is um, called two stars and a wish and the two stars have to do with two things that i found in your uh in your project to your presentation that i thought were were really well done really uh excellent and gave me some great ideas and then the wish might be well i wish you had been able to go into more depth on uh, this particular topic or something along those lines so that it's not a major criticism it's just some suggestions for ways to improve what you're doing yeah and I you know I really like that that idea of suggestions um, things that you can that's the beginning of collaboration mm -hmm. uh, absolutely to and that is becoming if it if it wasn't an important skill before it absolutely is crucial yeah. now so beautiful and, and it doesn't have to be intimidating it doesn't have to be labeled peer review okay so it it, it can be within a, another assignment that they're working on building that trust building those channels of communication so it doesn't have to be anything that feels alien or alienating to the process of building community and learning from each other and just the process of hearing constructive criticism mm -hmm. it's really we need to build a, a thicker skin on that of course. ready to hear how can I improve my work because we always yeah. Can. yeah yeah and and if as the instructor you provide the students with the opportunity to actually give them some concrete suggestions ideas here's what the, the, this is this is uh, this is an, a very effective paragraph here and here are some specific ideas for how to make it so this takes us to the meat and potatoes of our, our conversation today. So um, what we wanted to bring to you today are these two approaches to peer review. So there's one open-ended, which is self-directed, and a more traditional one, which is led by the instructor. So Yudi, you wanna I will jump in, but I will jump in on your instructor directed one. Okay. Because that's the one that comes to mind when most of us think about peer review. And an instructor directed peer review would be where, uh, as the instructor, you give them specific questions to respond to as you're either reading through their paper or looking at their presentation. Or even better, <clears throat> 
develop a rubric for them to use as they are going through with places for them to make comments. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and again, the constructive uh, critiques, the ways of improving it uh, throughout. So this is, um, this is what we think of as a traditional yes. peer review, yes. where we're looking at uh, where the instructor gives them the specific guidance. And this, again, it would be in a come up into the start small and start mm -hmm. early mm -hmm. category, because if, if, uh, if my teacher has given me a list of things that I need to look for as I'm going through that, then that makes it a pretty easy process mm -hmm. for me. And it also makes it uh, pretty painless mm -hmm. for the person receiving that feedback. Yeah. So the other one may sound counterintuitive because we started saying that students do not know how to do peer review. And that may be true. They may not know how to implement the process, but they do know what they don't know, right? Especially if we give them the opportunity to think about where is it they're having difficulties in creating their project. So we will start with the student as the author, the creator of that. I just wanted to throw in too, I think, um, you know, there's a, there's a generation that's coming up that's really very comfortable with sort of group work and mm -hmm. collaboration. And so they might, folks might surprise you in terms of their, their willingness to critique and offer their suggestions. Yes. So um, it's, it, it's so fun to try something new like this. Yeah. yeah. So um, tell your students to write questions where they have them, or there's something called the peer review memo which is simply a paragraph in which they very conversationally tell the reviewer where to um, concentrate their attention. So where to go and uh, offer their help. And Mary so, speaking as the author of the, the thing that's going to be reviewed. So if I have written something, then I'm gonna go back in and say, uh, you know, I'm not really comfortable with that lead-in paragraph, could you take a look at that for me, please? Mm -hmm. That sort of thing. As the author of someone having a, having a conversation with the person that's going to be reviewing it, I need help here. How can, what can I do? And you know, maybe that, that, um, that audio feedback tool that we have in Canvas would actually enhance, um, encourage that conversational tone. Yeah, and, and we were talking about that um, this morning. Uh, what would be the resources or the classroom, online classroom tools that we would probably use for to encourage these to be a more than one um, step? So something that will go back and forth, and uh, I think that recording tool will be really good for that. So we can also start with a reviewer. So uh, let the students, and I find this fascinating, let the students come up with the criteria or the aspects they think are important to review. Mm -hmm. So they will come up with what they think makes a good paper. And then they will look for concrete evidence in the work of their peers that show how these criteria were met. And if not, then um, they will provide that wish or suggestion for how to improve. So instead of you coming up with a rubric, what if you could tell your student, give me a couple questions or give me a couple indicators of how you think this could be improved? Mm -hmm. What would you think of having, is there, I don't know what you would call it, but if the student who is getting the author of the paper um, puts out, these are the areas where I'm struggling, can anybody offer a suggestion? Um, I don't know if that's part of it, but. Yeah, yeah. definitely, definitely. Yeah. Again, what was, your, what was the term, the peer review? Um, memo. Memo, yeah, yeah. thank you. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so the peer review memo would be written also by the author. Yeah. 
Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah. So two things we talked about. Um, so normally we said, okay, a peer review needs to be anonymous so that students will not feel like pressured to be generous or they won't be biased. Um, but once you turn it into a conversation, it becomes really personal. So, but if you give them really good um, guidance and uh, there's, they need to kind of prove what they're saying, then it doesn't need to be anonymous because they will be entering into sort of a dialogue with each other. You're saying it does not need to be anonymous? Yes. Okay. Yes. Not yeah. necessarily. And we tend to think of it as, a, as an anonymous type of a, of, a, of, of a process. And it can be, certainly. But it can also be um, a peer-to-peer -peer interaction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because it is, it is really personal when you say, hey, uh, I would like you to look at the introduction of my paper. I, I don't, don't seem to be able to narrow it down. Can you offer suggestions? So, and I would think that the the instructor would have the potential for be taking a, a really important role here because if I'm the student who's reviewing, say Judy's paper, and I see something, and I'm not comfortable with giving her the feedback, I I might lean on my instructor to say, hey, what? Yeah. I see this. Is it is it okay to say that? How can I say it in a way that's respectful? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You no, know, that would that would I would need some help on that for sure. And that would be part of the way the instructor could set the whole thing up as encouraging them to reach out in ways to be able to say things without being without uh, without it being offensive or. Uh, a personal direction one would hope that we don't get that way but it's possible yeah. are we moving on ah okay so um, this is our padlet conversation do we since we're such a large group here do we want to go ahead and go into the padlet or just have this have the conversation on this I'm okay with having a conversation. Okay. Yes, Ms. Mary. Well, um, I would probably go for the um, the. Um, I would love to see my students create a list of things they would look for. I would love to see how far they go and probably come up with things that I, as instructor, would never see in a paper. Yeah. So I think I would definitely give that a try. And um, um, make it very low stakes at first. Mm -hmm. um, and build up as the semester goes. And probably what I did when I did peer review before, um, after a first round, make it a class-wide learning experience. So if they came up with really good things to look for, I will definitely share that with the entire class. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, one of the things that I would like to do would be to have um, a sp maybe use a specific rubric or a um, sort of a Google form that would help guide the reviewers and to know what what specifically are they looking for um, that they could rate particular things especially if you're doing a skill-based course uh, the online course that I was designing was um, Google Docs and Google Drive you know and so if you if you put together a specific product then your reviewer would would look for elements and, um, and then offer suggestions for ways to enhance it, make it, mm -hmm. you know, better. But. And that could work. Um, I hadn't even thought about it from that perspective because that could work from the viewpoint of 
someone who is knowledgeable in that particular tool as being able to improve what it's what they're what they're doing with it but it could also do come from the other direction i am not knowledgeable about uh most anything in uh, google docs and so i would be looking at the end, end result as from how easy is this going to be for me to figure out right how can i uh, just sort of saying oh look what you did that's kind of neat i'd like to try that myself yeah um and oh okay it, it really if you're able to see each other's work it really helps bring some new ideas to your own table mm -hmm. yeah definitely. yeah definitely so since we're this um uh this intimate gathering with varying degrees of of comfort level uh particularly within canvas what could we, how could we implement um the various components of peer review within our online class or how we can guide the instructors that we work with through that process. I have a professor who used the discussion boards. So what she did is she had students declare on the discussion board whose paper they were going to review. So once they said, oh, this person is taken, nobody else can <laughs> go and look at that person's work. They, um, they um, went ahead and did the work, and then they posted the work on the discussion board. So the person reviewed, um, received feedback on the discussion board, and then they um, would upload their final revision on as an assignment, as a separate assignment. So there was credit for the initial submission, the peer review, and then the final version of it. So it was a three-step mm -hmm. paper that she, and she used a very simple tool, the discussion board. So it, it proves that there are ways to find, to make the technology work for us. It doesn't have to be cumbersome or elaborate. And there is actually a peer review tool in Canvas. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, have you worked with it at all? I have not. I was actually waiting for this discussion before I died. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 we both we had that same conversation yeah. as well. And I will confess that it did not. I I had a had someone in here with me, so I did not go in and, and look at it. So before we redo this uh, particular mm -hmm. session, then we'll all need to do that so that we yeah. have some experience in Absolutely. it. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, anything it's else? Like any other? That, you know, we just have to give it a try and, and see how it works. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so conversations, anything else about how we could implement or how we could encourage our faculty members to uh, implement peer review? I, I think probably letting them know how it is going to help them mm -hmm. as they go through the grading process as well as help them prepare their students for their next iterations, wherever that may take them. Well, and just remembering that this strategy is a really solid way to bring students into that higher level thinking. Mm -hmm. the, the evaluating, judging piece is right there. Um, yeah. and, and being sure to establish the guidelines in terms mm -hmm. of being respectful of other people's work and, and how to give constructive I like, I, what did you call it, two? Oh, two stars and a wish. I love that. <laughs> yeah, that's I actually have a little um, document, little paper that I've created that has that on there. And I use it in <clears throat> in face-to-face -face classes for presentations all the time. But um, but I, I have to figure out a way to make it. Um, a document that I can use in an online class mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. 
Okay, so I think you've moved us into where we were headed next. Mm -hmm. So we talked about ROI, the return on the investment. We talked about what the investment was, but, uh, but the return, I think, as often is the case in things that we do is, is uh, well worth or even more, more, more worth the time that's involved in it. So it's, uh, we're talking about skills that transfer mm -hmm. outside of the classroom. Yeah, in that idea of the project as work in progress. That's definitely one of my favorite aspects of peer review. And we look, we, we can tell our students that knowledge is expendable from uh, the input of their peers. Uh, so it's, it's a combination of growing from each other, but at the same time, which leads us to personal accountability. Um, they don't see the instructor again as the only source of that knowledge. Absolutely. And you know, being able to see other people's perspective, listening to other people's perspective, and um, gosh, it, that the story of uh, Pixar Incorporated and how mm -hmm. they, their whole process is co very much dependent on a group of people who will give specific feedback on projects at different stages. Yeah. Yeah. And regardless, they, they'll identify the problem. They might not, the artist might not listen to the solutions that's offered, but they are required within the culture of that corporation to listen yeah. to you and yeah. the, the, the problems that are, yeah. that are brought up. And I think you touched on the essential aspect of it, which is concrete and specific. Regardless of the mechanism you use to get your students there, the end result is always very concrete steps for improvement. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. So, wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We, uh, we had no other word, and we said, okay, so after everything we have said, why would you not want to try this in your class, right? So self-direction, which is critical to student success, would be my first thought. And that uh, that mindset of things that help me grow and help me learn and, uh, and, and gives me a perspective on the process of learning that my mistakes are not errors or failures, but as ways to learn and grow. It was Edison that said, no, I didn't fail in creating a light bulb. I've just found 10,000 different ways to approach it. Absolutely. And critical thinking doesn't get any better than coming up with your very own criteria of quality. Yeah, yeah. And again, here's that underlying thread that we seem to be going, going throughout everything that we do is the whole active learning piece. Learning is, I, I have to take my responsibility for my own learning. And I learn both from my instructor, certainly, <clears throat> but I also learn from my peers as well as learning from the from my the the content of the course, and uh, and so the whole active learning cycle yeah. uh, is a, is a is a part of it, and that puts me as a member of a of a very effective, a very strong community of learners. Yeah. Yeah. And one another piece of active learning is I learn from myself. I learn how I learn. I, I learn how I learn from knowing what works best for me. And that leads perfectly to the topic of, of our next um, discussion or conversation, which is metacognition. Nice. And thinking about how I learn and how I grow. Yes. So we wanted to end up with a quote and um, 
when your students are trained peer reviewers, they act as coaches. And their feedback helps their peers fine tune skills, tweak understanding, and of course, increase knowledge. And the whole idea of coaches is just such a, such a wonderful perspective on it as um, no, you know, being able to guide mm -hmm. and, and help each other through the process. Yeah. And a coach does more than just give you the skills to, you know, catch the ball or run a play. A coach is somebody who helps to strengthen your character. Mm -hmm. And this ability to receive criticism and to offer encouragement, um, that really, you, the instructor absolutely needs to be the coach encouraging students to do that because we're not just here to, to pass on knowledge we're we're here growing character and um, and the key is also um, making sure that each of the students knows that they have the coach potential as well yeah, absolutely absolutely So today we talked about general best practices for peer review. We talked with each other about our own personal preferences mm -hmm. for trying out peer review in the classroom and discovered a method that maybe we hadn't thought about before. I know I sure hadn't. <laughs> and we had identified what some of our preferences are for implementing that method. And uh, definitely talked about takeaways for our students. Uh, and that's the uh, return for our investment today. One of the articles that I read, not for this, but for another one, talked about the fact that <clears throat> when students graduate, the things that they've gotten from their courses are kind of like a whole big global thing it's not oh well in this course we did that mm -hmm. and all that so and so and in this course we did that it's how it all all ties in together to make them a well-rounded individual it isn't mm -hmm. what they get what a specific piece of knowledge from a class but how it all ties in together and I really like that perspective on it yeah it's mm -hmm. like thing yeah it's like a what composting <laughs> yes yeah. are you throwing banana peels and orange peels and i think that might have been where when i where i read the article yeah. for that yeah. uh, i'll uh, go, i think that might have been where it was yeah yeah mm -hmm. so uh, this is the list of some of the uh, the articles the things that we have found that uh, that connect to uh, to the ideas of Peer review and and uh, teaching our students how to be effective in in giving feedback, and and like you mentioned, this is this is the this is a framework for collaboration. Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely. And metacognition. Yes. Yes. Funny you should mention that. <laughs> so we, <coughs> November twenty eighth. Yeah, next Monday will be a, a talking about metacognition mm -hmm. and uh, ideas about how we plan, how we're going to monitor, how we're going to evaluate our own learning experiences uh, for ourselves, essentially for ourselves, because if we don't think about it for ourselves, we're not going to encourage it in our students, but then also encouraging it for them. Absolutely. And then on December 5th, we have project-based learning, which is all about bringing the real world into what our students do in class. So, well, that fits in too. Yes. Yeah, isn't it nice how that's kind of, this, that whole underlying thread, maybe we need to put a thread in our uh, uh, in our presentations. <laughs> Great. Thank you for being a, uh, a part of this this uh, this presentation.
Thank you very much. Thank you.